So we've seen that vectors are useful. Um, geometrically, we can use them to represent velocities, or we can use them to represent forces. We know how to add vectors and what, what the picture is. Um, we know how to, to scale them, and we know how to subtract them. What we'd like to do now is to relate this back to numbers somehow. So I've got two vectors here. In, uh, let's, let's assume that we're in two-dimensional space. And in order to turn these vectors into something that we can, uh, we can do numbers with, what we want to do is we want to think about two standard unit vectors. So we're going to make a vector that points along, we're in two dimensions, so we'll make a vector that points along the positive x-axis and has length 1. We'll call that vector i. This is forever after the name of this vector i. We'll also make a vector that points along the positive y-axis and we'll call that vector j. Now, um, sometimes it depends on the textbook you're looking at, but sometimes they call this vector E1 and uh, E2. But I and J are what our book uses. Those are, those are pretty common. Um, so what we want to do is to, is to take a vector like this vector U, and we're going to um, write it as a little bit of I and a little bit of J. So starting from the tail of this vector, I'm going to draw a horizontal line here along the x-axis, and I'll draw a vertical line down through here. And now you can see that this vector u is actually the sum of two vectors. Some vector that's all in the i direction and some vector that points in the same direction as j. If this vector just points in the i direction, it must be some scalar multiple of i. And I actually picked this so this would be exactly four times the length of i. So, And uh, this is um, two times the length of j, right? This vector points in the same direction as j. It's just twice as long as this vector j over here. So actually, u could be written this way as the vector 4i plus 2j, where we know that i is the unit vector in the, po the direction of the positive x-axis, and j is the unit vector in the same direction as the positive y-axis. Or really, all that matters then to interpreting what u is is to know how much i and how much j. So Sometimes we'll just write it this way. We'll just give a list of numbers, two numbers, say 4 and 2, right? We'll know that the first number refers to how much i, and the second number refers to how much j it takes to create this vector u. And we could do the same thing with this vector v here. This vector v has a certain amount in the i direction and a certain amount in the j direction. This one looks like it's about 3i. And it's, uh, it's, it's the same length as j, it's just in the opposite direction. So this is minus j. So we could say the vector v is 3i minus j. Or we could just give a list of components. Right? So we have 3, the component is 3 in the i direction, and this, the second component is minus 1 in the j direction. So whether we write it as 3i minus j, or we just list how much of each that's going to be the same to us. So we'll use either notation. You'll notice the book switches back and forth. They're trying to get you used to using both notations in case you use calculus in some other class. Right? Well, you will use it in some other class. And the idea is just so that you can uh, readily adapt to whatever notation you're given. All right, so we have now taken a vector, which was something geometric, right? an arrow with a direction and a magnitude, and we turned it into something that's just symbolic. It's just a list of numbers. This is actually going to be perfect for us because remember our class is about taking functions that have a list of inputs and and a list of outputs. Vectors are going to be how we organize those inputs and outputs and how we visualize them in some cases. Alright, so we had now three operations on vectors. We could add them, we could scale, scale them, and we could subtract them. And the question is if we're working with these lists of numbers instead of working with these geometric things, how do, how do we add them? How do we subtract them? You know, the answer is, is pretty obvious, and that's nice. So, for example, we just had this vector u, which was 4i plus 2j, and this vector v, which was 3i minus j. If you wanted to figure out what, um, what the vector u plus v was, geometrically, you would put them um, head to tail, right? And then here's the vector u plus v. It just carries you from the tail of u to the head of v. So there's u plus v. Let's try to figure out what the components of that vector are. Well, let's think about just the i components. We know that when you take u, it's going to carry you forward 4 in the i direction. v carries you forward 3 in the i direction. So you know in total, 
u plus v is going to carry you 4 plus 3. That's 7 in the i direction. So we can just add the i components of the two vectors in order to add the two vectors. Same thing with the j component. The u carries you up 2, but v carries you down 1. So if you take up 2 and down 1, you have a total of 1. And so to find if u is uh, 4i plus 2j and v is 3i minus j, then to figure out what u plus v is, you're just going to combine the components. 4i and 3i is going to carry you over a total 7i. 2j and negative j, 2 minus 1 is going to be, or 2 plus negative 1 is going to be um, 1j. Or if we're just thinking about it in terms of lists, right, u is this list, 4 and 2, 4 in the i component, 4 in the i direction, 2 in the j, j direction, and v was 3, negative 1, so to get u plus v, we just add the components. 4 plus 3 is 7, 2 and negative 1 is 1. So pretty easy to add vectors. What about scaling them? So suppose you have this vector u. Um, it was 4i and 2j. And you want to make u twice as long, right? You want to multiply it by the scalar number 2. So you're going to get a vector twice as long. Well, can you see that to make u twice as long, you're going to use twice as much as you had in the i direction and twice as much as you had in the j direction. So we're thinking if you, if you have this vector u and it's 4i plus 2j, then 2u is going to be 8i plus 4j. I just doubled the components. So, or in terms of lists of numbers, if u is this list 4 and 2, where this 4 means 4 in the i direction and this 2 means 2 in the j direction. Then you want to take 2 times that. You're just going to multiply 2 times each entry. Ah, what could be easier? Suppose you had the vector u and it was um, 3, negative 1. And you want to find a vector that was 1 third the length. You would just take 1 third times that vector. That would just give you one-third of three is one, and one-third of negative one is negative one-third. So to scale a vector, just multiply each entry by whatever the scalar is. If you're scaling by two, double all the entries. If you're scaling by one-third, take one-third of all the entries, and so on.